uh, glutenataxia and the way your cerebellum works and it's stemming from a gluten intolerance and now this is not for everyone and this doesn't apply to everyone but it can manifest as tremors and that's usually sometimes the first sign of it because of all the maladaption that the brain undergoes as this process this disease process is taking place and then finally we see the tremor and we're realizing that they're not fitting certain criteria for like a parkinson's or like an essential tremor or different types but they're they are it's actually stemming from a metabolic reason that the brain is behaving this way after years and years of neuroinflammation and like what the immune system has done and its relationship with the brain. Yeah, I think that that's a good one to bring up the gluten ataxia because um, these patients will come in and can come in while it's not a, a extremely common um, thing that we see, but generally they can be very young and they're coming in with pretty significant, significant um, clinical observations of, you know, changes in their movement that you would expect to see in somebody a bit older. So generally, if I see that, I mean, that's a really big red flag. Um, unless they have something maybe structural or congenital that could have also been causing this. So those are things we, we haven't really touched on um, today, but there's other reasons that people can develop changes in their movement and their gait in their dexterity um, that also could be related to neurodevelopment. But if they don't have those things going on and they're young, that's like one of the first things that comes to my brain is I, I'm gonna test them. Um, do they have celiac disease? Um, are they creating antibodies to their cerebellum? Like what is going on there? Cause this completely doesn't make sense. Um, and that is, that is a wild one to think about. Mm -hmm. that something that food that we're consuming um, could be causing such significant symptoms for people.